Hello, good morning, everyone, on this beautiful Monday morning here. I think we're uh, actually about the, almost to the end of April, getting ready to, to go into a new uh, season of May, new month of May. I'm excited for that. I hope everyone had a great weekend as well. As many of you know, you're watching me live here on the Instagram that actually is um, at 10 a.m. Central Time on Monday morning. Also, let me also tell you this as well, that um, we are on here, like I said, uh, every Monday at 10 a.m. Central Time. For those of you who want to stay tuned live, I would love to see you guys live. That'd be great. Also, don't forget to tell your friends about it. Many of you are actually probably watching this uh, uh, pre-recorded, maybe on, uh, let's see, your LinkedIn, Zap It, um, oh my gosh, Facebook, uh, uh, God, there's so many other ones, other than Twitter. So, you know, I'm glad you guys are watching us after the fact as well. But I definitely want to see you guys engage with me in the live on Instagram on Monday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. So, tell all your friends and definitely make sure you're sharing this video to all of your friends as well. I'd like to see some new faces as well, all right? So, today I'm going to talk about something that I believe is really uh, powerful on the fact that Revelation opens the door to awakening. So as you guys know, let me sort of backtrack a little bit. As you guys know, um, I'm Jeremy Lopez, of course, and I put out a month every a book every month, which is part of our Hot Off the Press monthly book club for our partners. And uh, and also we offer, uh, offer it actually to the public as well for those to buy that book. However, those on the Hot Off the Press monthly book club, they get the free shipping in the continental USA. They get the free ebook as well, which is a $10.99 value. Uh, and they give me to autograph it, uh, you know, I'll autograph them uh, as I go out. So, uh, those of you who are not on the program, let me also tell you this as well. Um, if you don't get on, I'm actually going to lock in some books in the future that will only be for our partners, and it won't be offered on a website. So, if some of you see me on the Instagram Live in the future, and you hear me talk about, let's say, my newest book, um, it won't not it won't be offered to you. So, that's why it's very important that you guys get on the Hot Off the Press Monthly Book Club, so that way you can get it. Because I always tell people, no matter how you plead and beg in the future, uh, we're not going to offer up uh, every book to the public. Public, all right. Sometimes we're gonna lock them in just for our partners. So make sure you guys are getting, you know, on our hot off the press month book club. So today we're gonna talk about Revelation opens a door to awakening. Now that's actually coming from my newest book that came out this month, Spiritual Awakening: Time to Get Revived. And as you guys know, I pretty much write thicker books, but I believe it's actually a um, a really great book. So we've sold so many of them. In fact, it's funny because we actually had to order. We're on our third batch of books. Uh, for this one. We've sold out completely, and so we had to order more, sold those out completely, had to order more, and now we're on our third batch. So, and in fact, I just had uh, one of our uh, amazing uh, people from the team uh, text me earlier and tell me, you know, hey, any question I had about the, uh, you know, about awakening, spiritual awakening, you know, having a spiritual encounter awakening, uh, like your book answered for me. So that was really good. But I am going to answer a couple of questions today. I've got one or two that, questions of people who have written in to me that I want to be able to answer today. And by the way, our, our my team just actually put the link on here. So once again, if you guys want to click on that link right there, right now, you can order, the, which is part of the third batch of the books. You can order the book today before they run out, or you can download it as a PDF file as well. All right. So, but I'm telling you guys, you think I'm kidding you. It's already, we've already ran out of these twice. So we're on a third batch. So order them right now. So let's talk about Revelation opening the door. And then I'm going to get to a question in a minute that I believe that what someone had for me as well. So I want to talk about this. So when we deal with spiritual awakening, let's backtrack. The name of the book, Spiritual Awakening, Time to Get Revived. Now, as you guys know, I'm not a big revival fan because, yeah, you know, I'm just, revived just means revive and it can die back down. I'm more into what we call revolution. I'm more into spiritual awakening because once you've had a spiritual awakening through a revolution, what happens is you never are the same again. There's nothing to go back to. Revival comes and goes. That's why we've seen, you know, the uh, Lakeland Revival, it came, it went, it's dead. You know, uh, uh, Pensacola Revival came, went, and it's dead. You know, uh, Toronto came and went, and it's dead. So revival really doesn't do a whole lot for you. So that's why I'm not really a big keen believer in the word revival. I'm more into having a paradigm shift that awakens you spiritually, that alters your mindset to where you never have anything to go back into again, all right? So that's what I'm after. I'm actually more awakening and revolution more than I am revival. And I'm sure many of you, if you think about it, you're probably on the same page with me. Because revival is not actually the most popular word, or, or excuse me, the most positive word, because you can revive something, but once you revive it, that means there's no paradigm change. That, that means there's no awakening. So once you revive it, you have to sustain yourself on that spiritual revival high in order for you to actually 
you feel like something's changed, but in actuality, there is no change, all right? So, so the key is in revolution through spiritual awakening, all right, that shifts you. So today I want to talk about this. So let's say, for example, when we talk about revelation opening the door to awakening, let's deal with escaping ignorance, okay? So when we deal with ignorance, that means that what we want to do is when you're having a spiritual encounter uh, as far as an awakening, you know, the Bible says, awakest thou who sleeps and slumbers. And what that means is the moment you've been, you're, you're starting to experience an unfolding of an awakening in the spiritual sense, what happens is you begin to face your fears. You begin to face the, at the and, and look uh, ignorant straight in the eye to say, you know what, I'm seeing through you. See, here's the key thing we have to remember. Every one of us suffers from lack of knowledge. No one escapes that, unfortunately. We all suffer from lack of knowledge, which means that the moment we have an inkling of a spiritual awakening, which means the moment we encounter uh, this now moment, this now reality, and re and feel as if something is shifting and changing in the now moment, then that that now that now shifting begins to reshape our thinking, our paradigm. See, that's why revival does nothing for your mind. Revival does nothing to your soul. It just is, it just revives you. A revival to me is like getting drunk. <laughs> no offense, but it's true because you can get drunk, but you get sober again. So if people say, "Oh, I've got so many issues." and problems. I'm going to drink my life away. They get drunk. Well, guess what? Once you once you get undrunk, once you get sober, your problems are still there. Are you with me? So revival just revives you and it keeps you on an emotional high. That's why I'm not really into revival. I'm into awakening that shifts your paradigm and causes your brain to reformulate its, uh, its thoughts to where the neurons in your brain, spiritually speaking and naturally speaking, shifts to be conducive to a new thought. And the moment you give into a new way of thinking, a new thought, what happens is then there's nothing for you to go back to because the hunger or the desire you once had for an old thought of theology, an old thought of doctrines, an old thought of maybe how you worshiped God, an old thought of how maybe you saw God is, has been reformulated so it, it, it doesn't remain the same. So, so all of a sudden your desire goes away. Revival does not cause your desires to go away of the old, old nature. That's why you have new wine in a new wine skin, because a new wine cannot go into an old paradigm. And so if you're revived and you have a taste of the wine of, of God, what happens is once the wine is gone, it can sustain because the old paradigm or the old wine skin is still left there. And so no matter how much you pour new wine into it, you're still moving into an old paradigm of an old wine skin. And the Bible makes it plain. So, so your mind needs to shift into understanding that no longer will I see the ignorance of my past and look into the limitation of what I've been viewing that it actually is trying to, or I'm trying to maintain it, but it's not maintaining me. Come on. See, old paradigms you have to maintain because they will not maintain or sustain you. An old doctrinal belief, an old theology belief, a theological belief, what happens is you have to maintain that in order to reinforce its worth and reinforce its life in order for it to be able to help maintain you. But once you've shifted into a new paradigm of awakening, then you no longer have to maintain an old paradigm because it's already been reformulated. It's already been re recrystallized. In other words, it's already been reshaped. So then the new begins to sustain you. Are you with me? So that that's why people go from conference to conference. How many of you are out there? Come on. You need to talk to me now. How many of you go from conference to conference because you like the spiritual high of revival? The reason why, because you're you're truly going against the scriptures that says, don't go about you see or feel. Your feelings of being revived has to sustain itself. So it's almost like taking a drug like cocaine or meth, whatever, because you have to sustain that spiritual high, which the Bible makes it plain to us that that being zealous can be good, but it doesn't do you good without the power of knowledge. Because God is, in fact, God never said he's pouring revival in the earth. Come on. He never said he's pouring revival in the earth. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, pour out the, 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 um, the knowledge of the power, right? So he's going to pour out the knowledge into the earth as the waters cover the sea. So God is into empowering people with knowledge, not a spiritual hyper emotion. Because once you move in the spiritual hype of emotion of revival, you have to sustain that revival mentality within your soul 24-7. Why? Because you never shifted to allow an unfolding of something to reshape you, like, like repentance. Repentance reshapes you. 
it, it revisits your paradigm and then reshifts it to something new, seeing it in a, by a different angle, seeing it in a totally different direction. Are you with me? So that's why you have to have an awakening of the now reality of the Christ mind moving in you to say, Father God, I want to repent of my ignorance of how I've seen my old paradigms because now I'm seeing through them. Are you with me? See, ignorance remains in us. Listen to me. Ignorance will remain in you. Ignorance will remain on, in you on a situation of your life or your job, whatever. And it remains in you until awakening, which is the key factor that actually unlocks ignorance and causes you to go through ignorance to see it from another angle or to go through it to see it from the other side. How many of you just got that? When you see ignorance from the other side by going through it, David knew this because David said, Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. See, many of you are trying to, to bind away your situation, bind away your valley, bind, you know, bind away, you know, something that's hitting you of ignorance. And God says, I will never bind it away because knowledge is power, which means you have to go through it. When you go through the valley of ignorance, you come out on the other side with wisdom. That's why wisdom cries out because wisdom here, let, let me tell you something God showed me that last week. Okay. And that is this. Ignorance is your valley. When you go through the valley of the shadow of ignorance or, or death, when you go through it, wisdom's on the other side crying out. And wisdom never allows you to bypass ignorance. Wisdom makes you go through ignorance of the valley of ignorance to come on the other side. That's how you gain wisdom. How many of you heard the phrase before we say, been there, done that? You know, hey, I, I, I've got the t-shirt to prove it. That's a powerful statement, even though it's a buzzword, but it's letting you know you had to go through it, so now you're authorized to wear the t-shirt, right? So what, what, what wisdom is crying out is saying to you to this. Wisdom is saying, don't peep, don't hide, don't go around it, go through it. Leaders go through ignorance. Leaders never bypass ignorance, they go through ignorance. They understand the key is the experiential avenue of the ignorance and by going through it that actually formulates a new way of wisdom, a new way of thinking. So therefore, wisdom only comes forth when you go through your ignorance and the valley of your ignorance. Come on, are you with me? Because that's what makes a person's paradigm shift. Amen? Mary, it's so good to see you on here. Love you so much, my friend. And so what happens is you, it, you have a, a, sheer, a spiritual shifting of a consciousness because when we think consciousness, here's what we have to remember. Consciousness versus subconscious, all right? You've heard it before. This is not new age. This is just how our minds are created, all right? So because we have a conscious and a subconscious, and we can get into, into the other levels of our consciousness, but we're not going to today. But what happens is I move when I'm throughout my day, I move from my subconscious because my subconscious has already stored the, the patterns of how to walk, talk, use the bathroom, eat, uh, drive. Are you with me? I don't have to re. I don't have to renew myself to say I got to re-update re myself. How do I drive again from yesterday? Oh, I got to update myself. How do I go to the bathroom? Oh, wait a minute. I think today I've got to put clothes on. Like I did. You know. How do I do that again? Your subconscious doesn't do that. It just kicks in. So you automatically know the pattern or the habit you've built from day to day of just of just basically building your foundation in order for you to kick in your sub, your, your conscious consciousness to live and awaken in the now reality, to learn something new or to see something and be aware of the now reality. That's why God says, I'm, I'm your ever-present help in time of trouble. God is the I am, not the I used to, or I was, or I, I'm becoming. Are you with me? If you ever look at God outside of the I amness, you lock the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob out. You lock the God of the of the Israel out because you've already you've already learned that you are creating and crafting your own God of the past or the future. But God says that let tomorrow take care of itself. That the past is done away with. Behold, I knew I do a new thing. So when you when you move in the I amness, the the reality of the God we know of scriptures, you're moving into the I amness, and your conscious mind kicks in more because it's hungry for more wisdom. And it says, go through the problem. Go through the situation. You're going to come out shining like gold. Why? Because you'll come out with wisdom. Wisdom can only be found by going through the ignorant stage of your life or the situ situation. Are you with me? And so that's the thing we have to understand. So when you get this, and by the way, let me answer this question real quick. To get to this book, going to have to join the, your book club. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to tell you something. Awesome. Let me share this with you why, since Mary brought this up. Um, I'm going into a lot deeper stuff. On this, I'm talking about spiritual awakening. If you're religious, 
If you're religious, you won't, you won't like this book. If you're sons of God, you'll love it. My next book's coming out. It's going to be The Vibration of Foods. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm going to talk about the, the vibrations of red, green, blue, the colors of foods, why your body needs those. That's coming out very soon. I'm going to talk about a lot of powerful things you guys need to hear that most Christians have never heard before because I'm trying to get you in your, in your awareness of your body so connection. So I'm moving in that this season, okay, to where you understand how to move into the soul and how to and how to be and how that correlates with and runs with the body to where you're aligned with what God is saying in the spirit and as a triune being, body, body, soul, spirit, you're finally moving to your oneness stage, and your soul is not fragmented over here, your body's not over here, your spirit's over here. See, most people move in that reality. We want to be able to move into the unity. That book, that the book of Acts talked about the unity of oneness of body, soul, and spirit, to where my, to where everything about me is aligned in full agreement with what God is saying and what God is doing in my now reality. To where I'm not scattered, my feelings are not over here, my mind's over here. Oh, one day, someday, and yet, and yet, my spirit is supposedly trying to align with God's word, while my soul is having a flight into the into the into yesterday to tomorrow what's going to happen what will become of me and that's why you're fragmented in other words put it put another way you'll be unstable in all your ways cuz you're double minded come on you think with your mind you think with the mind of the heart and if and if that's not aligned guess what you're double minded no matter how much you name it claim it grab it and blab it and grab it, you'll be, un you'll be un unaligned. Are you with me? So when we deal with spiritual awakening, back to this now, when we deal with spiritual awakening, we have to understand we have to escape our ignorance, which means we have to begin to go through it. Wisdom is found only through going through the valley. Let me guys, let me guys give you a great example. It's like, for example, you know, and, and we see this, all, this model all through the Bible. David went through it. Moses had to deal with it and go through it. Abraham went through it. God could have said, hey, Moses, don't ever go to, you know, you've, you've escaped Egypt. Don't ever go through, go there again. You know, hey, run and find a new lifestyle over here, Moses. No. You know what God says? Hey, Moses, come on. Go through Egypt. Go through. I'm going to have you to go back to Pharaoh. See, many of you never thought about this before. Moses, I'm going to have you go back to Pharaoh several times until he gets it. <laughs> Or into the miracles that manifest out of you that's always been in you. Because Moses, for example, when we deal with spiritual awakening, Moses didn't bypass Egypt. Moses went through Egypt. Come on, he went through Egypt. He went back and forth. He went back and forth like a good businessman does. Are you with me? So he went back and forth to Egypt over and over again. Why? Because God says, Moses, the more you go through Egypt, the more you go through your situation, what happens is miracles in you awaken to the reality of who you are as a leader. But if you bypass Egypt, you'll never see the miracles out of the belly, out of the rivers out of your belly flow out of you to help align your identity to see who you are and what you're made of and what you're made, capable of doing. See, many of you never heard that before from your pastors, have you? Because we, because we're we're too busy trying to tell people bypass this, don't go by this. You're in this situation, run, 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 escape. You know, bury your head in the sand. But the Bible is flooded full of stories where God says, "Go through it. Be a, make a man out of yourself. Be a woman of God. Go through it." Deborah went through it. Moses went through Egypt. In fact, Moses, God even says, not only will you go through Egypt, you'll even go through the Red Sea. When you're partying, you go through it. So see, miracles happen when you go through your situation. And you come out shining like gold. You come out purified through the fire. That's why the Bible says God chooses us from the furnace of affliction. God doesn't choose you when you're bypassing the experiences you are destined to go through. I'm going to sit on that for a moment. How many of you just heard me? God does not use people who, who bypass the experiential aspects of their destiny by bypassing their situations. He uses those who are, who are made and burned away the, the wood, hay, and stubble, the chaff, as, as the Word of God says, by going through the furnace of affliction. God chooses us from the furnace of affliction because He wants somebody who is hot Spiritually speaking, he wants somebody who's been purified. He wants somebody who's gained wisdom through the hell of going through it. Let me give you another example. Moses went through it twice, through Egypt, through the Red Sea, and made a man out of him. He gained his wisdom through that. Abraham, same way with Abraham. Abraham 
Go, go to the, go this direction. Abraham, go through here. Why? Because it tra- the Bible. In fact, if you read the Bible where it says that Abraham, uh, where, where he's made the father of many nations, you will also read Abraham just came back from fighting. He just came back from war. You need to read your Bible. It says Abraham just came back from the from the from the battlefield, and then after that, God began to call him to be metamorphosized into the be the father of many nations. Why? Because when you go through the battle, when you go through through the situation, it makes a man out of you, and, it's, and, it, and it, it, it beckons you to come up here like John the Revelator, because wisdom is awakening in you, pushing out the darkness of ignorance that you once suffered with. You will never gain wisdom by bypass, bypassing the situation, ever. So we see that. We see David going to the valley. We see David having to fight the giant. David, go through it. What, 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 what spiritual awakening happened within David when he went through the giant? In other words, when he, when he met his match on the battlefield, what happened? He gained the revelation what a pebble or a rock would do once you fling it. He gained the revelation that he about stones of remembrance. He, he gained the wisdom of God by understanding what armor did not fit him, Saul. Are you with me? So when you go through a situation, that's where you have your greatest spiritual awakening. You're not going to have a spiritual awakening by going to a church conference and having somebody hundo shundo fire fire fire, and you're like, ah, you know, that's not spiritual awakening. That is sustaining your feeling of an emotion that keeps you on a spiritual high. If that's a, well, I won't say that, but if that's a case, that's what drugs do to you. It gets you on a spiritual high. All right? So that's not what we want. You will never have a spiritual awakening by by being revived in a revival meeting. Spiritual awakening happens when you're left alone. The Bible says Jacob was left alone and there wrestled with a man. When you're when you're left alone to where you face your, your fears and you face the old identity of what you're sick and tired of looking at in the mirror of yourself, when you when you when you look in the mirror and see through your old identity, your failures, your weaknesses, you know, uh, you know, um, um, your your addictions. When you see through the identity you can't stand, you'll find the wisdom of your true identity to say, once I went through my old identity, I, got, I gained the wisdom where the veil was rent into and I was able to see the real me. Come on. How many is with me? God is more concerned with making the man than he is the ministry. God is more concerned with making you awaken more than anything. Okay, so through that, you have to begin to understand. So Abraham went through things. Uh, Moses went through things. Jacob went through things. You know, think about it. Are you with me? And think about the things, the power of wisdom and, and, and even the action that they took on the experiential aspects of going through the, the, their ignorance and going through the situation that gained them ground to know who they were. David discovered who he was. He even had to fight the the bear. The, are you with me? The lion. He fought those. Why he could have he could have said, "Oh, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. No, don't come near me." He didn't. What he did was he understood. I got to go through the lion, through the bear. Why? Because it'll make a man out of me, and I'll gain the the wisdom that that needs to awaken in me the cells of a butterfly in the cocoon and in the in the and the, the, the caterpillar cells will awaken in me, pushing me closer to destiny, which is to be king. Because see, these awakenings happen in your life to wake you up to the fullness of the value and the worthiness and the worth and the destiny that you're called to be in. You will never, ever, ever experience destiny by not going through poverty. Oh, that's, that, that, that was a trigger for many of you. You will never gain riches unless you go through poverty. See, many of you are like, oh, no, no, I just wish it away. See, like in the 80s, we had this commercial. I, I'm telling my age here. In the 80s, we had this commercial about Calgon. And it was like, Calgon, take me away. And this woman was all frustrated and flustered in the kitchen, you know, trying to cook for her kids. And she's like, oh, I can't handle all this. All of a sudden, the next scene is you see her in this, in this beautiful bathtub full of bubbles. And she's just like, you know, like, ugh. I'm enjoying my bath with my candles. You know, Calgon was the, that was a thing to soak in that made the bubble effect. Are you with me? But what happens is you won't have, you won't have the utopia of knowing what it is that God wants you to experience in your destiny unless you go through the situations. Many of you are wanting Calgon to take you away because you're not really wanting to have a true encounter with the awakening aspects of the spirit of awakening to actually cause you to go through something 
and lock on and then awake you to where you're never the same again. When you go through situations, you lock on hand in hand with wisdom and it will never let you go. When you bypass situations because you don't want to go through the valley, when you don't want to go through anything, guess what happens? You have to go through revival every time to awaken you because you never had a revolution to show you who you really were. Let me tell you, that revival never exposes your true identity. Revival keeps you on a high. When you have awakening, it shifts you by going through something and it makes a man out of you because then and only then, where once you saw a, in a glass dim, but soon you'll see him face to face. Why? Because going through the fog, going through the, you know, through the mirror effect, you find your worst fears are actually going to become your greatest uh, strengths because you learn to cast them down because you go through them and you find your real identity. So in the mirror, you see who you really are face to face. But I thought, I see Christ. You do. You see Christ and then you see you. Because the veil has been written too for you to discover the Christ in you, but, but also discover who you were meant to be in your life. Are you with me? These are the things you have to understand. So that's what awakening really does to you. So you have to begin to understand it's not about escaping ignorance, ignorance. It's about going through ignorance, going through poverty, going through the valley of the shadow of death, going through Egypt, crossing the Red Sea, going through it. Let me give you guys this amazing, let me give you a lady, some amazing ladies that you can know in the Bible, okay? And that is this, Esther. Esther, did God say, yo, you know, I uh, almost said yo-yo, uh, you know, yo, man. Did, did, did God look at Esther and say, lo, daughter, I ask you to flee this, flee this country. Don't worry about saving your people. Run like to the mountains and live a life that you're meant to live, says the Lord. No, what he did is he said, Esther, you're going to go through it. You're going to go through it. You're going to marry him. And then when you least expect it, I'm going to cause those, you're going to go through the doors into the courtroom and you're going to enter the, into this, this sort of the majestic you know, place and I'm going to cause you to go through it and you're going to face your fear. You're going to, you're going to talk to your husband versus the king guy. You know, you're, you're going to do this because your people need to be free. And she could have said, I don't want to go through it, God. I don't, I'm a big baby. No, he says, go through it, Esther. Because when you go through it, you'll shift a paradigm that'll awaken you to who you really are. When you go through it, Esther, the king will see you. Let me, let, me, let me put it to you another way. The king of kings and lord of lords sees you when you go through the situation, not when you don't. Hello. Come on, women. You want everything to be beautiful, hunky-dory, wonderful, grace, grace, great, you know, but, but, but we're not willing to pay the price to go through something like Esther did that awakened her to her true identity and even awakened the king to say, pretty much, you have my full attention. I could kill you for this because you because you came in here, you know, you didn't follow protocol, but yet even the king's, oh, this is good. Even the king's um, paradigm shifted when she did that to see her as the woman he was meant to see her as. Come on. Sometimes you got to break the rules, folks. Sometimes you got to go through it. If you don't go through it, don't expect the king of kings and lord of lords for lack of better, 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 better terms, to have a spiritual awakening to see the real you. Even though the king, even though the Lord sees it and knows who you should be and knows how you're the, the person you, you're meant to be in the future, but it will shift his paradigm, for lack of better words, come on, when you go through the situation to say, now I see you, daughter, you're ready. Now I see you, son, you're ready. Because you are faithful in the small things, now I can make your faith and deliver many things. You are faithful to go through the small things to where the big things come on you and hit you, you're going to come right out shining like gold because you'll go through it like you did the small things. Come on, folks. Are you with me? That's where we've got to begin to understand. And, and that's the key thing you have to re remember. So through that, through that, Life's challenges makes you and it makes you it makes you and it awakens you and you get at that moment. Guess what? The the let me go back up. It gives you the spiritual awakening. Prodigal son, God, you know the father could have said, "Don't go out there, hey man. Don't go out there in the field. Don't go out to the pig. You don't know what's out there." In fact, I'll tell you what. I'm not only giving you your inheritance. I'll give you more money to stay here. Here, I, I, I'll give you ten thousand dollars more. Rub rubles, whatever, you know. I'll give you $10,000 more if you stay here. Don't go. Don't go experiencing that. 
And when people ask me all the time, oh, my kid, man, I raised them in the way they should go, but now they're up there, they're out there, you know, listening to this kind of music. And they're out there, you know, my daughter's, you know, living with her boyfriend now. And, and oh, my goodness, you know, she's got this job and she's serving beer at the bar. Oh, my gosh, what happened? Am I a bad mom? Am I a bad dad? And we get all drama queen about it because we feel like we've raised our kids. And yet it didn't, God's word didn't, didn't work for us. Why? Because they're out doing their thing. One thing you have to realize is what if God is making them? What if God is shaping them and formulating them by having them awaken to the pig sky, pig sty, like the prodigal son did? I'm going to tell you something really plain. I want everybody to hear me out. Here, how many of you got have, have, have children? If you do not allow your children to go to the valley of the shadow of death, but your love is trying to cover them, I mean, cover them by saying, I want you to only go to a Christian school so you won't be exposed to the world. I want you to be homeschooled to where homeschooled to where you know you won't be hurt but you won't be exposed to the world. If you do that, you are spiritually damaging your children. If you do that, you're spiritually making your children mentally challenged because I don't know what else word to use because you're not willing to allow God to have his way because the Bible doesn't say, it doesn't say train up the child in the, in the way you want them to go. It says train up a child in the way that uh, that uh, that they should go. Not it's not about you, folks. Moms, dads, listen. You're supposed to be prophetic with your children to know the way they should go. Well, my son wants to be a ballerina. Well, God never asked you your opinion of what your son's going to be. Well, my daughter wants to play football. God never asked your opinion. It's not about what your way is. It's about what his way is. So that's why it says train up a child in the way they should go. Parents, if you're not being prophetic enough in the way your child, by seeing through your child to see the development and the avenue they need to go, then and, and you sort of and you take the rein to say, no, you're gonna do this, no, you're gonna do that, then you are literally damaging your child. You're spiritually damaging your child because the Bible says train up the child the way they need to go. That way when they get old, they won't depart. Not from you, they won't depart in the way that you molded them by being prophetic enough to seeing their personality and the shifts and the changes prophetically on the direction they need to go. No son of mine's gonna dance. Well, you know what? Then you know what? You might as well kick God to the curb because it, because what you're doing is you're going by the way you think he should go, not the way God wants him to go. So you threw God out of the window just now. Women, same way with you, with you. You got to remember, you know, it's like it's like when you deal with Samuel and you you deal with these, you know, um, Hannah begging God for a child. God, if you give me a child, I'll give him back to you. You mean, Hannah, you'll have no say-so? It won't be about what you want for your child? Exactly, God. I'll give him back to you, no questions asked. And I won't even raise a child. I'll just be prophetic enough to give him back to you that you'll raise him. In whatever way he needs to go, you'll raise him. That's where parents mess up because they don't look, act like Hannah to say, Lord, whatever that child needs to do that I'm prophetically sensing or seeing or that child is sensing, I need to support that. Because it's not the way I want them to go. It's the way they need to go. That's biblical, folks. And so when you're dealing with awakening, you have to begin to understand, folks, that if you want to have your child be the best that they need to be in the world, spiritually awaken to see exactly the way that God is pushing them and pulling them and don't stop them from going through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't stop them from not knowing what the world, what's in the world. Because you're good, because what's going to happen, they're going to wake up one day petrified, fearful, and either they will rebel so bad they will run as far as they can to the world, or they'll be so uh, spiritually um, in fear they'll never reach their destiny because they'll be afraid to, to touch anybody, to go out there, to do anything, to get a job, whatever. So I'm, I'm anti that. Make a man or woman out of them by, by seeing prophetically what, the direction they need to go and cater towards that direction. Guys, God never asked you your opinion on what you thought your children should do or be. Come on. When I hear parents say, my children should be doing this, I say, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. God didn't ask you for your opinion. You just birthed a child. It's God's child. You, you just birthed a child. God didn't ask you for your opinion. In fact, he says, train them up in the way they need to go. So you have no right, no opinion, no say-so in your child's life. Well, my child's doing this. Well, God never asked you your opinion. All right, so zip it, baby. <laughs> Are you with me? Hey, we, we all have to do that, right? That's biblical. So all to the Bible, it's the shifting and awakening. Eli and Samuel, another great example. Hey, come back. You know, did you call me Eli? No, go back to sleep. Second time. Hey, did you call me Eli? No, I didn't. Go back to sleep. Did you call? No, I didn't. Wait a minute. Hold on. That's God calling you, Samuel. You need to pay attention to him, which means what he's saying is you're running to your mentors. Put it another way. Children, 
are trying to run to their parents to, to, to find out what they needed to be doing. And yet Eli's smart enough to say, Samuel, uh-uh, hold on. God's calling you. I don't want to interrupt what God's saying to you. It's not my business to incorporate my feeling, my thoughts, my two cents worth in, the, in what God's speaking to you. Ignore your mentor and what your mom and dad are, are trying to tell you. Listen to the Lord. Now, it doesn't mean not honor your mom and dad, but what we're saying is this, because you should. Long days will be for you. What we're saying is this. Don't give your opinions, people. A, a true mentor mentors somebody to listen to God for themselves. A true mentor doesn't keep them keep people hanging by a thread and keep on listening to me and do what I tell you to do. No, no, no. A true mentor says, that's God calling you. What is God telling you, my son or daughter? Come on. Hello. Can you hear that? And see, religious people don't want to hear this kind of stuff because they don't want to face the reality of what true spiritual awakening does within you and what it can do within your kids as well. So that's a place of knowing how to begin to shift your awakening into where you need to be in your life. Because let me tell you something. My mother, I remember this, my mother will tell you that, um, let's see, when she was, I was 14, I think my, when I was 14 years old, um, my mother, we went through a really a bad time in my life. And my mother was going through a bad time and God spoke to her a little, and he, and we were Baptists. We didn't know God speaks to you. I mean, at least God would never speak audibly. I mean, you know, God speaks somewhere in, internalizing. I don't know, you know, to them, I don't know. But the key thing is to her, she didn't know God spoke audibly. God spoke to her audibly. He says, if you give your life to me in, in this situation and you surrender this to your, you know, to me, I'll, to, I'll do things in your son, uh, the rest of your life that, that, that you won't understand. And to this very day, my mother would tell you, God told her, you know, when I was 14 years old, this was, gosh, a millennial ago, tons of years ago, but yet, but yet he says, I'll do something to your son, but you will understand it. That's a key right there that shows you backs up the scriptures by letting you understand that God does not ask you for your opinion. And just because you don't understand your child or your, I don't know who this is for, but God just has me going this route right now. Just because you don't understand your child, well, my child turned out this way, hey, you know, pride Pride would say, but that's a reflection on me if my son is this way. That's a reflection on, on me if my daughter's this way. Eh, eh, that's pride. That's pride. Get your pride out of the way. If you think your children are going to be a reflection on you, you need to put, lower your pride. That's pride in its purest, beautiful form speaking through you. Because then you care about your image. That's all you care about. Not your kids. You care about your more of your image that they make you look good. Come on. And so no matter how your son or daughter turns out and you say, oh my gosh, I don't understand. I don't understand. God never asked you to understand. Well, my daughter's this way. My son's this way. I don't, I don't understand. Well, God says, first of all, A, as a parent, no one asks you for your opinion. B, two, God never asks you to understand. Three, God says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me. Train up them the way they sense in their spirit they're going, and you need to, you need to support that. Come on, folks. I'm, ta I'm talking biblical to you. How many is on here for me? Amen? I love it. I don't know who you are, but Fashion Barbie, what a cool name. I like that. That's really cool. Mind you, that, that 80s song, Let's Go Barbie, you know, in the 80s, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, that's another world for me. But anyway, so so my point being is every one of you need to understand what we're talking about as far as going to the valley of ignorance. Understanding that that's the way the men and women of God in the Bible, that's the way they had a spiritual awakening. And that changed or altered their life and gave them new tools to work with, new identity, and new more of their path. You'll never know these three things, folks, until you go through it, all right? Escaping ignorance is not the way. It's going through the ignorance. David, you know, even though I make my bed in hell, you're there. David wasn't afraid. He didn't say, oh, God, I rebuke me going through this. I rebuke this. I rebuke this. Nowadays, the charismatic move has called everything a spirit, if you notice that. You know, we have spirits that the Bible even call, doesn't even call a spirit. We, got, you know, we have this spirit and that spirit. And I'm thinking, guys, as co-creators and creators, quit coming up with these names. You give When you come up with a name for a demon that or a spirit that doesn't even exist, you're, you're giving it nature. You're empowering it more. Because you're creating something of a, of a spirit, spiritual demonic entity, you are creating and crafting up, and you're now giving a nature by giving it a name. You know, when people go through deliverance, I cast out this. I, I want somebody to say, be careful what you say, 
Because, you know, you're, you can't empower, or here's, a, here's one other one. You know, demon, tell me your name. Oh my God, that's the last thing we want to do. <laughs> I mean, really? Because if you tell me your name, I can, I can agree with you and empower you because name means nature. I can give you, I can help reinforce the nature if you tell me your name. Eh, eh. We suffer lack of knowledge, folks. Let me tell you something. Quit empowering things. Quit giving things names, folks. That's why part of me, a part of my foot is in the charismatic move, and another part of me is out of the charismatic move. Because you've got to be careful, folks. I mean, you know, ugh, I won't get on that, but that's really a bad, dangerous thing to do. It's a bad, dangerous thing to do, you know? And so, eh, eh, wrong way. Don't do that. Amen. Just, just because somebody is doing it in a hyped mode or it sounds spiritual doesn't make it spiritual. If somebody is actually uh, empowering you to the play or, or teaching you to, to, you know, uh, you know, tell the demons your names or tell the, you know, you better be careful. You better run. I don't care how spiritually deep that sounds. That's not biblical. That is not good folks, because you're giving it the nature by giving it a name. That's what the word means. A name means nature in the Greek. So uh -uh, don't do that. All right. And plus, I don't want to focus on that kind of stuff. I'm focused on God, the author and finisher of my faith. God never says, look down, for hell is your redemption, or look down at where the demons are, or look around you where the negativity is. He says, look up for your redemption draws nigh. The higher I look, the more I begin to arise and ascend to the place in which I'm called to be in heavenly places, and I begin to have more of an awakening, and things fall off of me. I don't, I see, I'm not concerned with, all, with all, always binding and loosing all over me. I just, I, I just let things fall off of me by awakening to who I really am, awakening to what I'm called to do, and things automatically just fall off of you. Your greatest weapon you could ever have in your life is a spiritual awakening of wisdom. That is your weapon of warfare, if you want to call it a weapon of warfare. That's what it is. Wisdom destroys ignorance and bad theology and bad doctrines. Are you, and made up demons' names that you're creating, all right? So have a spiritual awakening and know who Christ is in you through that avenue, folks. It's absolutely beautiful. Where your focus goes, the energy flows. I'm into that, sister. That's so true. So get your spiritual awakening. In fact, that's a phrase I use a whole lot. You know, as it is above, uh, you know, so below. We have to understand these, these powerful principles, folks, okay? So today, order your spiritual awakening book. I said I would say, I, I, I will talk about a, uh, hold on a minute. Let's answer a question for a moment. Answer a question. Here's an here's a uh, hold on a minute. Okay, so one of the questions that came in is this: Is spiritual awakening only for believers, or could anyone or could anyone have their spirits awakened? That's a dynamic question because I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer that you do not have to be just a Christian to awaken. People have revelation all the time in the world. You know, can I answer it? Can I explain how that's always possible? I can't, but I'll just tell you this. God's bigger than what we give him credit for. That's all I'm saying, all right? You know, we can't look and say, you know, we've got us for, you know, what is the corner of the market? You know, us for no more. We have it. Nobody else does. We can't say that because if that's the case, why are people in the world richer than, some, than many of you? Why are some people in the world healthier than many of you? Why are people in the world in better shape than many of you? Are you with me? So we can't honestly say that awakenings can only happen to just the church people. That's not true. Awakenings can happen to anyone because the moment we reach the place of, of, of our spiritual perfection, where we are the richest people on the planet, we're the healthiest people on the planet, we're more in shape with our bodies, we're more in shape with our soul, we control our emotions to the point where we only move into, into the, the, the higher vibrational mo motion, emotions of love that God wants us to move into. You see what I'm saying? So can we say that we have the truth uh, in the sense of like awakening only and no one else does? Not at all. Because the, the Bible makes it plain. It, the universal principles of law, the dynamics of the, of the, the whole uh, law of the kingdom works for the just and the unjust is saying if you ask... Are you with me? Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. It never says, ask if you're aligned in God, you're having visu uh, you know, heavenly visitations. Ask if you speak in tongues and then you will, you will find. No, it just says ask. The universal aspects of creation, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door, sh door shall be open. For anyone, the Bible says, for anyone who asks, are you with me? Anyone who seeks, anyone who knocks. And it says that. It says to anyone. 
It rains upon the just, the unjust, okay? So guess what? It's time for all of us to begin to rise to the place of who we are in God, arise to the destiny, go through the fire, let it and find the wisdom through the valley and gain your wisdom. Go through the Egypt, go through the Red Sea, go through the fighting of the lion and the bear, go through the gates, Esther. Are you with me? And go through the cross, Jesus. Come on. The Bible even says Jesus went through the crowd and they didn't even recognize that he was going through them. When you go through your situation, you go through it, wisdom will guarantee you the only way I'll be found, speaking of wisdom point of view, the only way I will be found is on the other side of the ignorance that you go through. The only way wisdom is going to, wisdom is going to be found that's crying out to you is when you go through the valley, when you go through the situation because it'll tough you up, rough you up, and some things will fall off of you that need to fall off of you. Let me tell you something. When I look at people who, and I won't mention this, but if I look at people who have had the greatest spiritual encounters of their entire life, it's usually been people who were uh, doing something wrong, found in sin. The church pretty much, uh, in their warped mindset, I will love you back into life by exposing you, destroying you, making you nothing, but we're going to love you and restore you back. I, I don't want that in my life, you know. <laughs> Jeez, help me, Lord. That's what my friend says, Jesus, help me. You know, so no, no, no. But but normally when the church has rejected people that have been in high prolific positions of their, of their ministry and they're found in something and the church, you know, through love, I'm going to destroy you and brings them down to nothing and exposing them to the world. Why? To prove their own levels of pride and then going back into a place of now I, my pride is showing me how better I am from you, than you. Now I can restore you back, brother. That way we can put on Time Magazine that I was the one, man of God, who restored you back to health. That's anti-me. That is warped Christianity 101 at its very best, all right? But usually those people are the greatest ones that have the greatest awakenings in their lives. It's true. Because people who've literally been left for dead, remember, remember the parable where, hey, the, the, it's funny how the religious person walked by and left the guy for dead in the street. Isn't that interesting? Because religious people want to leave you on the street, but yet when someone begins to point towards them to say, hey, as a religious leader, you could restore them. Imagine the money you'd make off that restoration. Imagine, you know, the fame that you that people would see you as being the great apostolic restorer. Then you can be called apostle so-and-so because you've restored this man that was laying in the street back to life. And they run after this right here in pride. But it wasn't the religious man who stopped. It was an it was a, a man, a, a, a humble servant of God who just happened to walk by, picking the man up, pay for his hotel room, put him in it and said, hey, take care of him. Well, in fact, take care of him for a couple of days. That is a true person who has a spiritual awakening. Not a person who works by the politics of of uh, of the church. I'm, okay, I'm going to say something to you guys because I want to. Um, because this is, and I'm, I'm saying this. This is good. It's, it's good. My team's probably like, "Oh God, what is going to say?" It's good, but I want to leave you with this. Okay, the reason why Jeremy did not get involved with the Trump train when Trump was president, the reason why Jeremy did not get involved on the Trump train after he became, you know, after he, you know, Biden became president, the moment Jeremy, the reason why Jeremy doesn't get involved politically is because I've had a spiritual awakening to something greater than politics. I've had a spiritual awakening greater than a president. I've had a spiritual awakening greater than Republican versus Democrat. I've had a spiritual awakening that that is more biblical, that is look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Don't get in the system of the world, okay? Um, and I'm saying that in a grace way because I'm going to say something to all of you. If you think you're going to have a spiritual awakening by getting on the Trump train, the Biden train, the politics train, the getting involved in the political arena train, you're sadly mistaken. That'll get you, that'll keep you worse in a system that locks you in and you will never have any more revelation, nor will you ever have a spiritual awakening. Because these things do not sustain, or excuse me, they do not unfold in your life to show you a higher dimension of awakening that you desperately so need in Christ. Come on. So, so that's why for me, I look and I say, 
I don't have time to get involved in whatever conspiracy theories, Q9, you know, uh, he was supposed to be president, now he's not, blah, 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 blah. I don't have time to get involved in that, that, all, that, all that junk. You know why? Because there's something of a greater, there's something in me that's awakening that to a greater call. And it's, it is the awakening to the Christ in me, the awakening of destiny. And so when you have a spiritual awakening, folks, you'll say this, the old heavens and earth, they passed away in my life. Behold, a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness is now on is now dwelling and you are the rights of God in Christ Jesus. So if you want your old world of the system that's that's trying to woo you and call you get involved, get involved. When you allow that system to die out and you begin to look up, then the old earth and heavens will pass away. And you'll realize how much the system wants to suck you in and instead you broke the system and the cycle and you, you went up higher because you knew I, I will die if I don't have a, an awakening inside of me. I will literally die if I don't have an awakening to something higher that can sustain me and maintain me and show me great and mighty things I know not of. Are you with me? This is, these are the things I want you to begin to understand, folks. I say this in mercy and grace and love and compassion because we need to focus our eyes on the creator, not his creation, and not especially on a system that will never be rejuvenated or renewed. The world system was never created to be renewed. It cannot be. Break the mold, come out from among them, be separate, and know today God is calling you, come a little higher with me, that I can awaken you into a first love again that will open your eyes to something you've never in your entire existence ever seen or know about who you are. And the possibilities and the rivers that are crying to awaken in you that, can't, that revival can't awaken and Trump can't awaken or Republicans or Democrats can't awaken. But I see something, God, that my eye, that my natural eye cannot see. I go beyond that and see and hear something that is far greater than the natural realm. And I go into the thing, into the court of courts of God that take me to the holy place to see something and hear something I've never heard or seen or known before. Why? Because God, my theology is has 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 deafened me my theology has left me for dead my thinking and my doctrines have left me and my us for no more doctrines god of god just does it and us for no more of the church is killing me and i'm drying up god i need to know the universal christ the cosmic christ i need to know the christ of the bible i need to know jesus that reconciled all people all the world to the world everything in it the earth is the lord's the world and, and the bible says and everything in it i want to see you high lifted up god where the train of your rope feels not just this temple but the temple of the universe because everything belongs to you god and the only way to see that 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 tweaking or that awakening or the unfolding in me or the ripping and the tear of that veil in me is by me coming up higher and seeing something from an angle that I can only see from the heavens. Are you with me? That's the key thing, folks, that God is calling us to. Allow your religious sacred cows to be knocked over day. When you are hungry more than you've ever in your whole life been, you will say, you know, uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something to you guys. Don't don't I'm not cussing, I'm just saying when you get so hungry to be in God, you'll say the heck with it. Or for many of you, you might say the hell with it. I don't know. But when you realize, you know what, I am hungry for something greater than what I've known. I cannot return back, God. I've got to know more. And God says, You really want to know more? Then go straight through hell. And when you go straight, straight through hell, don't take a turn. Go straight through hell. And when you do, you'll find wisdom. Because what will happen is those flames will burn up the wood, hay, and stubble. It'll burn up your theology, your old doctrines, to say, he can be saved, but she can't be saved. You know, men can only work in church, not women. You know, uh, they can't go to heaven because they're doing this, but I'm going to heaven. All your us versus them will dissolve. The fire burns up your choices. 
Oh, come on. The fire of God burns up your choices. Or put it this way, of, of, your, us, of your us versus them. Us versus them your fire, the fire of God will burn it up and say it's not about us versus them. It's about us collectively working together. Come on. Oh, many of you are like, oh, Jesus, I don't know. I don't know, God, about this. Hey, the main thing God wants you to know is he's a lot bigger than you think. He owns more than you think. He knows more than you know. And he's far more greater than your denomination, your church, and even... Christianity. All right. It was once said to me by one of my dear friends, which is so true. And it says this, God is not a Christian and Jesus is not a Christian. Come on. Why? Because Jesus is the savior, the Bible says, of all. Jesus died the way we have life, life more abundantly. When we begin to understand and quit putting labels and titles and denominations and religion to this amazing thing we call Jesus, the Savior of all. When we when we happen, I love you guys dearly. Have a dynamic, awesome day. Thank you for being a part of my life. Share this with your friends. Definitely, please leave comments in the in the news feed below. I want to read them. I love every one of you. Stay tuned to Thoughts Become Things podcast on Wednesdays. Get on the Hot of the Press Monthly Book Club because the next month's book. Probably will not be found in any other hand except my partner's. And trust me, you do not want to miss next month's book. I know many of you are like, oh my God, I've been wanting to write on this journey. Well, it's going to be locked into the Hot Off the Press Monthly Book Club. So I would advise you, wisdom would say, join the, the Hot Off the Press Monthly, Monthly Book Club right now. Because when I announce it next week, next, thir- next Monday morning, you're going to be like, I want that book. And I'm going to say, I'm so sorry. Get on the Hot of Press Monthly Book Club and you can have the book. All right? I love every one of you. Go love with somebody today. You guys are amazing. I love you all dearly. Have a great day.